Okay, hello and welcome to another video. My current split that I'm doing, a little wacky, a little unconventional. Day one, arms. Day two, arms. Day three, arms. Day four, legs, repeat, no days off. All right, if you're going ballistic and saying, what the hell is this? I'm gonna link a few videos in the description that explain my injuries and my situation if you're new here and how I've ended up only being able to train arms and legs. This split, the reason I wanted to make this video is that it's produced more muscle gain the past several weeks, maybe a month that I've been following it. And so I think there's some interesting insights to draw from it. Uh, the split structure itself, as well as some of my other training approaches that you can apply to your own training to make more gain. So first off, day one, arms. What am I doing? This is exactly what the workout looks like. This is a pump focused workout. So the structure of the training session is set up to emphasize a pump. So I'm supersetting buys and tries because I'm always doing that. That's the best way to go as you're training your triceps, your biceps are resting and vice versa. It is hands down the most beneficial way to structure your arm workouts. The advantages of doing straight sets are much less than the drawbacks. 100% you should superset. Anyways, continuing on. The main unique thing about this session is that I'm using fast explosive reps, as you can see, and I'm going down to partials towards the end of the set where I can't move the weight at all. And I'm using a higher rep range. And the reason for this is that I've seen this exact style of training to lead to the most pump. Adding into that, I'm doing four drops or three drops, four sets total. So the triceps, I push to the maximum of the first set. I want to wait where I can get at least 30 reps and going down to partials at the end. And then I drop the pin a little bit, bang out another 10 to 20 reps, drop the pin again, another 10 to 20, drop the pin one more time, another 10 to 20 reps going down to partials at the end. And that's the first triceps drop set of the workout. And then I'm resting one to two minutes and then I'm repeating the exact same thing for biceps. Doing four total sets, drops, using a high reps, using a fast explosive tempo, and going down to partials at the end. And this combination of drop sets, fast explosive tempo, and partials leads to the nastiest pump that I've experienced, hands down, among any other lifting strategy that I've uh, employed. And now, you may be asking, well, why do you want to maximize your pump? I think that what I've seen, this is my current hypothesis, is that Training the muscle in a number of different ways leads to the most growth. And so in this case, that doesn't even mean doing different movements. You can do different movements if you want. And if you have the ability to, I recommend mixing in a few different movements here and there, but don't get carried away with it. But in my case, I'm limited to only a handful of movements. The movements stay consistent. The stimulus in terms of the way that the program is structured, I find if you vary that, you, you have the potential to produce additional growth. So in this workout, it's not about moving heavy weight. It's not about controlling the weight. It's not about feeling a mind-muscle connection. It's about just spamming the reps out, short rests, you're gonna be out of breath, and you're pumping as much blood into the muscle as possible because I think that's one method that can be effective for producing growth. And I don't wanna just stick to one exact training approach because I think it limits your progress over time. So that's day one of ARMS. And the next day, I go back into the gym and do day two of arms. Now, you may be asking, well, aren't you too sore? How can you hit a muscle two, uh, two days in a row? If you're just starting out, I don't think you should do this. I think you should just hit the arms once a week. And I don't think you need drop sets. I don't think you need partials. But as your body adapts, as your body adapts to what you're doing, you need to do more and more extreme things to spark additional growth. And the stage that I'm in now requires me to do this extreme of things to produce additional growth. And your body adapts to be able to, to respond and handle more workload as you go. So I've built up to this over a long period of time where the muscles have adapted enough to be able to withstand being trained three days in a row and actually benefiting and growing from it. So day two, now we're doing the kind of the opposite. We're focusing on a slow controlled tempo where I'm really trying to emphasize the stretch. And one of the primary reasons for this is because I find it, it accentuates the stimulus in my chest as well as my lats. So at the bottom of the triceps, when I really lower that weight slowly, and then I think about dropping my shoulders down, scooping my elbows in and letting them drift back, I'm putting a pretty significant stretch tension on my pecs and my lats. And this is what has produced a good amount of the upper body gains that I've seen. 
specifically this technique with those cues and the slow tempo. You can't really do it with a fast tempo. It's too crazy, and your risk of in injury is higher to really be trying to accentuate a stretch. I'm also doing drops. So I'm not, I'm doing some partials, but not as much. And I'm pushing in the, you know, 10, 8 to 12, maybe 8 to 15 rep range, roughly. The first set with the triceps, 95 pound dumbbell, slow eccentric, and then a faster concentric. I just get that weight back up, and then I'm milking that slow eccentric, looking for a good deep stretch at the bottom in my triceps, as well as my chest and my lats. And then I'm dropping the weight and going down to a cable and i'm banging out another i don't know 8 to 15 reps roughly and then i'm dropping the weight one more time sticking with the cable and banging out another 8 to 15 reps so three sets total in this drop set and that's uh, the first drop set for triceps and i rest one to two minutes ish similar to day one maybe the rest will be a little bit longer in, in this day because i'm not as focused on accentuating the pump and i would say probably the prime one of the primary parameters for accentuating the pump is to trim down the rest time. It's going to be difficult to get a significant pump if you're resting for long periods, but longer rest can be useful for other things. Um, and then I'm doing the same thing with biceps. The structure for the triceps and the biceps is exactly the same. And I'm repeating this drop set uh, or this, uh, yeah, drop set for the triceps, drop set for the biceps. That's one round. I'm repeating this for three rounds. And I, I don't think I mentioned on day one, I repeat that superset for four rounds. So uh, three or four, depends on the day. All right. And then day three, the focus is completely different. Now I want to try to move some heavy weight. So I'm going to use a normal tempo, slightly fast and explosive. And if you're familiar with the channel, you'll, you'll notice this is actually slower than I would have usually focused on for my progressive overload sets. But I'm trying to add in a little bit more control with, with just a bit of a burst on the concentric. That would be pushing the weight up overhead for the triceps or curling the weight up towards your body for the biceps. That's the concentric when the muscle is contracting, the eccentric, the lengthening when the muscle is, is lengthening or stretching out. Um, this time we're doing drop sets again, which I'm going to get into after I summarize day three as to why I'm just spamming drop sets constantly and partials. <laughs> <laughs> There's some nuance to it, but in this case, I'm using a heavy weight that I can get. I think I got 13 on the first set with the triceps overhead and 12 uh, with the biceps using the 105 for the triceps and the 110 pound barbell for the biceps. And then I'm dropping the uh, weight two times. So I'm doing three sets total, two drops. First set, rest 10 seconds, drop down to the 85 for the, uh, for the triceps, bang out another six, seven reps drop down to the 65, uh, bang out another maybe six to 10 reps, and then rest a bit longer, probably like two to three minutes. So I want a little bit more recovery here because I'm a little bit more focused on trying to move heavy weight. And when you want to move heavy weight and track your progress, you want to use an extended rest time. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing drop sets, but again, I'm going to get into why I'm doing that in a second. And then I do the exact same thing for biceps where I'm pushing with the 110 pound dumbbell or barbell, for 12 reps and then I drop down to the 90 and do another six, seven reps, doing a little bit of partials at the end and then I drop down to the 70, bang out another six to eight reps. And that's one round. And then I'm gonna repeat that whole thing for three rounds total. Okay, so that's the three days of arms back to back to back. Okay, now one the main reason that I'm doing drop sets is because I've found that just doing normal straight sets and focusing on progressive overload no matter how I decide to structure it, simply does not produce any more growth in my arms. And I've stuck with that and focused specifically on that for a year straight, a couple of years where my, I'd hit 18 inches over a year ago. And um, amidst many other strategies, I was highlighting single set to failure, resting extended, uh, uh, extended window of time, supersetting back between buys and tries, which I highly recommend you do because it produced a lot of my growth over the years, simply not leading to any additional growth at this point. And this is where I get to my main point that I want to make to you is that what I've seen with training is that if you progressively up the ante, more is almost always more, meaning more intensity is going to lead to more growth. And so in this case, how can I make the intensity of each set more difficult. If we look back at day three of my arm training, where I'm focused on pushing heavy weight, which was 
a uh, foundational aspect of my training over the past several years, normally I would take a heavy weight and push to failure, regular range of motion failure, and that would be the end of the set. And then I would rest an extended time, do the same thing with biceps, repeat this three, four times, do some crazy drop set at the end to pump up and get out of there. And that stimulated a lot of growth for me and helped me get from 16, 17 inch arms up to 18. But now that doesn't produce any additional growth. And so to make the set more intense, the demand on the muscle, I'm going to do drop sets. So I'm going to push with the 105 for 13 reps. And then I'm going to drop down to the 85. I'm going to bang another six. I'm going to drop down to the 65. I'm going to get another seven. So the total demand or the intensity dial on my triceps and that set has cranked up some in comparison to just doing a single set to failure and then resting an extended time doing the same thing with biceps and repeating. And the other aspect that I want to touch on is that, I guess I'll say partials as well are another way to, to take that intensity technique further where particularly in uh, arm day one where I'm focused on a pump and I'm using higher reps that I really want to milk those partials because it makes the, the stimulus or the demand on the muscle higher, which I need at this point to, to potentially spark more growth. Um, and the other aspect to this tra- part of my training is that the frequency is really high. And so again, I would say more is more. Now, a small thing to note with this is that the total amount of work that you do on your body is going to create systemic fatigue. And so I've seen increasing the frequency while dropping back the volume a bit. And maybe for some of you, this still seems like high volume, but I'm only doing three or four rounds of the, of each drop set. And you could look at a drop set, like an X one set. I don't like if you did four sets in a drop set where you do your first set and then three drops, is that four total working sets? I don't really think so because you're not resting and recovering and then blasting the muscle again. You're kind of just extending that. So maybe it's something like two sets. But so then even if you want to multiply it, I'm doing, you know, six to eight sets per muscle, something like that in each workout. In the past, I was definitely doing double digit or more. And I scaled that volume down some because the total amount of workload or fatigue on my body is a factor. And if I'm going to be able to recover uh, while taking advantage of this higher frequency, which I've seen the higher frequency to be extremely effective right now for me to produce more growth. And I, I did it for a bit back in the summer. And then I, and then I came off of it and I went back to resting one or even two days in between sessions. And I actually noticed that if anything, my arms atrophied some. And some people say, well, it's inflammation, it's just swelling. I don't think so. I think that the muscle is actually responding to the increased demand that I'm putting on it. I'm putting additional stress. You could think about it as if saying there's additional work that needs to be done. So you need to adapt by strengthening and growing in size. And when I reduce that workload, instead of training arms three days in a row or every day for 16 days straight, which was an experiment I did in the summer, that the muscle then goes, or there's a way to think about it. Obviously, the muscle doesn't actually have a brain, but to, for us to potentially make sense of it with our minds, it goes, okay, uh, I'm not needed to be as strong and as big because there isn't as much of a demand. And at this point, when you're like close to your natural genetic limit or like, you know, hovering right around it, which I believe I am, your body doesn't necessarily want to hold on to additional muscle. You're pushing that limit where it's you're going to the extreme where it's almost maybe inefficient for your body to have additional meat on the arms right so your argument to convince the body to continue to layer on muscle has to be so extreme and that's what i've seen and so what i would want you to take from this looking at the way that i'm training and then i'll get into what my leg day looks like and we'll wrap this up is that i think this is an extreme example of how more is more and if you do it progressively and pay attention to how your body adapts in terms of muscle growth and strength to your current stimulus or your training structure in terms of the frequency, the intensity, the volume. Those are the main things, not what freaking exercise you're doing or if you're isolating the side of your delt properly. How many, how intense do I push each, each set? How often do I hit that muscle? Um, and how many sets of work in each session do I do? What does my recovery look like? And how can I tweak these things as I go? That's probably the simplest way of looking at the things that are stimulating or producing muscle growth, in my opinion. What I'm doing right now, what those parameters look like, 
is that producing growth? Yes, no. If it is, keep doing it. No need to do any, like if you see what I'm doing, like don't just do this for no reason. You should let your body give you the feedback that determines what the next step is. So if your answer is no, I'm not growing, then you should do something more. You should put a greater demand on your body if you want additional muscle growth. And with that comes an additional demand on recovery and additional potential sacrifices in your life that you're going to have to make. You might be more tired. You might need to make an effort to eat more food and so forth. Go to bed a little bit earlier. There's going to be additional demands. But if you want more muscle growth, then you need to do something more. I really think it's that simple. Train more often, add more sets, find a way to intensify the the sets that you do do by using drop sets, by using partials, by using myo reps, which is like a drop set, but instead of decreasing the weight, you keep the weight the same and you just rest a little bit and let the reps fall more, which I'm not as much of a fan of, but also an, an effective intensity technique. Um, those are all things that over time are going to lead to more growth. And you stretch that out over many, many years. And I've been back training my arms now for four or five years. And I've slowly upped the ante. In the beginning, I just did like three sets for my triceps. I didn't even hit biceps. And I would just do high reps, body weight skull crushers, and push all the way to failure. Um, actually, I think in the beginning, I just did one set. And I would push all the way to failure. And the intensity was really high. The reps were high. And then I would just rest. And then I would, and then I added two sets and eventually got in the gym. And like slowly progressing, progressing it. Instead of resting four days, I'd rest three I really like people go crazy looking for like specific answers of like, what is overtraining? Like what's the optimal amount of rest in between sessions? What's the optimal am amount of sets? What's the optimal amount of intensity? I think it totally depends on where you're at. And I think if you feel confused with all that shit, because people are trying to present the information as if there's an exact prescription for people, I don't think that's the accurate interpretation of it. I think what's accurate is what are you currently doing? What is your current frequency? How often do you currently train? How intense do you currently push your sets? How many, how much volume do you currently do? And over the past three months, have you seen growth? Has the scale gone up? Have any of your measurements gone up? Do you visually appear to be gaining muscle? Are these metrics indicating that you're growing? If the answer is no, then the answer of what is the appropriate amount of frequency, intensity, volume is something more than what you're currently doing. If instead the answer was yes, then no need to up the intensity, up the volume, up the frequency. Keep doing what you're doing until you do hit a point where the answer becomes no. I'm no longer growing. I'm in a plateau, which is inevitable. And at which point the prescription or recommendation of what you should do to produce more growth is just going to be the next iteration of what you're currently doing, regardless of somebody's general recommendation. I would say ignore that unless you're a brand new beginner because just doing something is going to lead to growth. Instead, you should look at what you're doing and just turn the dial up slightly and then pay attention to how your body responds. And then potentially a couple months later, do the same thing. Within that, you might want to adjust some tempos, play around with a few different exercises. You can change some of these other parameters, but primarily the frequency of how often you hit the muscle, the intensity of how hard you hit the muscle, and then the volume of how much of that work you do are the three main things that are going to lead to growth. And I think it's a complete waste of time to keep analyzing and studying over and over again. I mean, this is going to be a bit controversial, but I think for you to see the most growth, just do something and stick with it. And then when you want to see more growth, more is more. And you're potentially going to feel more tired, but your body adapts over time. And if you do it in a smart way where you're paying attention to the feedback that your body gets you, you could end up in a place like me where I'm doing something that 99% of people and maybe a lot of you are going to say that's overtraining, that doesn't work, you're an idiot, you're on steroids, blah, blah, blah. I'm 100% natural. For those of you who have been following, I posted my uh, blood work recently, like, I don't know, a month ago. And I have another lab uh, blood draw coming up soon because I've been taking this natural testosterone booster just as an experiment. So I want to see what it did. And I'm going to continue to post my blood work and be honest with you guys about the, what my status is and what I'm putting into my body. And I think that that should show you that what you can do is changes as your body adapts to different things. And, and I'm in an extreme state where I'm pushing more and more, harder and harder, because that's my personal decision to do that. And I'm not saying that you should do this and train this often, but I think it shows that progressing these parameters in your training will lead to a lot of additional growth that you're probably not going to see if you get stuck up, stuck and being stuck up, <laughs> sticking your nose up to, to prescribing to very generalistic recommendations, whether they're science-based or not science-based. I think that's what I would want you to take from this whole discussion is to make it specific to your training and then find ways to increase 
those individual parameters, frequency, intensity, and volume as you go. That's like you don't need to stress and argue with people about what's optimal, I don't think. Lastly, the leg day. Um, conversely, my leg training is, my leg development is much further behind my arm development. And so I don't have to do as extreme of a combination of frequency, intensity, and volume to see growth. And so what my leg day looks like right now is just two sets of lunges to absolute failure going down to partials at the end where I can't even move the weight. And because the leg muscles are so big, this is the most taxing part of my whole routine. Like obviously the individual biceps and triceps muscles, I push to way higher levels of fatigue, but that doesn't really tax my central nervous system as much. And it doesn't really create as much fatigue, nausea, temptation to end your life <laughs> that leg days do <laughs> and so what i've found recently which i think is kind of interesting is that before i was doing um six rounds of jumping lunges three with the right foot forward three with the left foot forward alternating back and forth pushing two range of motion failure full range of motion failure so once i can't jump anymore and i like i'm barely getting any air underneath my foot i'm not completing another rep i'm at failure i stop so the volume is higher. The frequency was the same. I've kind of consistently rested three days in between my leg training because right now I've found ways to still produce growth doing that. So there's no need to do it more often. Down the line, maybe. But right now, I'm not going to take some generalist recommendation of somebody that says, train your legs every other day if they're doing that until we do growth because I'm like, I'm seeing growth. So I don't, right now, based on my parameters. So I don't necessarily need to do that. Um, but what I found was... Eventually, those six sets, resting three days, pushing two failure. So the intensity is two range of motion failure with jumping lunges. The frequency is once every four days, resting uh, three days in between. And the volume is six sets. That led to a good amount of growth. I got my legs like 25 and a half inches, the upper quad, unpumped. And I was kind of stuck there. And so I said, let's try something different. Let me just do one set. I'm going to draw back the volume but I'm going to up the intensity more by pushing past regular range of motion failure where I go into partials until I can't even move my legs at all. And I rest, you know, I do my, let's, I alternate which leg goes first, but I either do my right or my leg, left foot forward first. And I do that set as such. And then I rest five minutes and then I do the other leg and that's it. I know that sounds crazy, but that has led to an additional half inch of growth. Um, my legs recently measured them to be 26 inches, which is exciting. And you may be going, well, I thought you said more is more. The combination of the parameters needs to be such that more is more. And so the frequency stayed the same. I'm training my legs once every four days, three days rest in between. The volume came down and the intensity went up. And I would argue that in this case, the intensity went up by more than the volume went down. If you were to measure the total productive stimulus of each parameter being what is this prescription of volume producing in terms of muscle growth versus what is this prescription of intensity producing in terms of uh, in terms of muscle growth and both prior were producing let's say a certain amount of muscle growth but the amount that the intensity increase is going to create overcomes potentially the loss of muscle growth from decreased volume because all other things equal typically more is going to be more is what i've seen in my own personal experience but the total cocktail of volume, in intensity, and frequency is much higher. And the workouts that I do now that are just two sets, but taking the set beyond regular range of motion, motion failure is way more taxing. Like after the two sets, I my quads, you know when you finish uh, an intense set and you get a burn in the muscle? My quads are literally that lactic acid burn may, sticks around for five minutes. <laughs> I'm just laying on the ground, writhing in pain. I've never experienced anything like it before. <laughs> and the degree of like dizziness, fatigue, nausea is much higher than the, the way that my workout was structured before. So it is a more demanding workout. And so the way that, that you structure your training to make it more is not always going to be as simplistic because when you increase one thing, you may drop the other thing down. Meaning in this case, I increase intensity, I drop the sets down. There could be a world where dropping the intensity down and increasing the sets would lead to more growth. And maybe along my leg training journey, let's say like three months from now, after this strategy is kind of produced all the gains that it will, I've milked all the gains from it that are there, going back to more sets and dropping down the uh, 
intensity a little bit and potentially increasing the volume to just rest two days in between, maybe that cocktail or that combination of parameters will be the next thing I'd need to do to produce additional growth. Okay, so it's not necessarily a hard and fast rule where like always you need to keep all the parameters the same and increase one. And now the whole combination, the additive combination of all of them is more than before. You're kind of adjusting, tweaking them. And you know, there has to be some give potentially, you know, with my arm training, like I'm saying, if I'm going to train arms three days in a row and the frequency is going to be really high, I'm going to have to bring back the individual workout volume, the total number of sets in each session back some to be able to sustain that because my recovery is limited and the amount of fatigue that my body can handle and actually in a productive way, produce an additional muscle growth is limited. It is capped. It's not infinite. So that is a factor that I had to keep in mind. I tried initially, I was doing it arms three days in a row with more volume and the amount of systemic fatigue was, was higher to the point where it, I was so tired and I don't even know if it was productive for muscle growth. So it is a factor that you have to keep in mind when you're doing this, but your, your ability to withstand X amount of workload or systemic fatigue, I think increases as you progress. So my ability to withstand a certain workload is much higher than someone else's who's just been working out for two years. But if that person continues to show up and train really hard and adjust these parameters and scale up their training to make it more and more demanding, they could eventually be at a le similar level to me or greater. That's how I think that's the best way to look at it. And just to finish and conclude, um, takeaway point is that these recommendations of frequency and intensity and volume are specific to you. And I think we're getting so lost in this optimal training movement and this science-based lifting movement and then bro science arguing back. And it's just like, there. I don't think it's the most productive way to go about your training pr to produce the most results for yourself. I think it doesn't hurt to educate. And if you're completely new to this, to watch some different content and get some different takes and start to build your foundation so you kind of have something to go off of. But long term, I think it's way better to to not get too caught up in these discussions and these arguments and this uh, like uh, paralysis by analysis of breaking down these little details that don't really matter. I think it's as simple as these three main factors that I'm, I'm promoting and your exercise selection and these tier lists and isolating all these muscles, I, it doesn't hurt. It's not bad information, but I just, I don't think it's the meat and potatoes. It's actually going to produce the majority of your results. And if you're really serious about the gym and you really want to actually grow, this is what I've seen to be the truth is that these parameters of intensity, frequency, and volume are the key drivers and that there's no fixed general recommendations going to be best for you. Cause I've tried initially, I was in the same boat as some of you are that I would adhere to these things. And just over many years, it became very clear to me that it's just based off of what you're current doing. I know I already said this. I'll say it once more and you're on your way. What you're currently doing, take stock of it. If you're growing, just keep doing it. If you're not growing, you need to adjust. You need to increase your intensity or increase your volume or increase your frequency or something like that. Okay? And and it doesn't matter what other people are recommending or prescribing because your own body is going to tell you what is the best relationship with those parameters. And that also shifts over time which was my kind of main point that I started with where single set to failure training with extended rest times has been probably the primary driver of growth from a technical standpoint of the structure of individual workouts using a slightly fast explosive tempo to go from 17 to 18 inches. Among other techniques, that wasn't the only training modality that I was using, but that, I think that's probably the majority, I would say. But now... It's, it, there's, it's just, it's so, so evident that it's not going to produce additional growth. So my personal process with those parameters needs to shift. And if I want more growth, I need to increase the frequency. I need to increase the intensity or increase the volume. I need to do more. And while also managing my recovery and finding a good balance that creates a cocktail that forces the body to produce additional muscular adaptations um, while still being able to recover from it, that's the point. I think I've said it enough times in a million different circles. I hope that that was interesting to you. Again, I'm not recommending you follow my split, but I thought me highlighting exactly what I'm doing and how I've gotten here and what I've seen along the journey would help you to factor into your own training, to take ownership of what you're doing. Stop feeling so confused about the overload of information out there and the over complication of working out. It's not really that complicated. 
and to hone in on those key foundational factors of your training and find ways to adjust them for you to go out there and make more gains, which is exciting because you, I'm sure if you're, if you watch this whole thing, you can already think about your training and you can already go, what could I do a little differently to crank up the knob if you're willing to do it, but it's going to take more guts. It's going to take more dedication, drive and sacrifice. But if you really love it, like I do, and you really are invested into the process, then that's what I recommend. I hope that you factor that in to get more growth. If you want to support um, check out the arm program linked below, give you the exact routines that I'm doing. All my courses are a bit more structured. I give away most of the information here for free, but if you want to support me and you want a little bit more of direct guidance, you can check that out. Thanks for watching as always, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.